Hi, YouTube family. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's been cold here in Texas in recent days, and it put me in the mood for some stew and cornbread. So I said I'm going to go ahead and take you guys along for the journey. So come on, step into my kitchen. Okay, guys. So I have every I have prepped everything, dot, cut up everything that I'm going to need to uh, prepare my stew. So right here I have two yellow onions. And I cut them up uh, kind of chunky because I'm just using this for seasoning. I'm not going to uh, have this in my food because everybody doesn't like onions and things in their, in their food. So I can take them out easy when they're um, chunky like this. I have some green bell pepper also for seasoning. I have some um, baby petite carrots. You can buy that in a bag. I, got, I bought the small bag. I have red potatoes that I have washed off. Uh, and have them soaking in water so they don't brown on me. And here, because my family likes to eat a lot, so I have four pounds of beef, uh, chopped beef stew meat, cubed beef stew meat. And for my seasonings, here I have a can of diced uh, Roma-style tomatoes, garlic that comes in the squeeze bottle. It's minced garlic. Laurie seasoned salt. Because we have to have some flavor, you guys. I love this stuff for my steak and any type of beef that I cook. This Uncle Chris's Gourmet Steak Seasoning. If you haven't tried, give it a try. Of course, some black pepper, some accent, and some garlic salt. And then I have some beef stock, some flour, and a couple of packs of the McCormick Beef Stew Mix. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start prepping everything, getting it all stirred up and ready to cook. Okay. Okay, guys. Now I'm going to season up the beef uh, stew meat. So here I have the, and you have to season to taste. So I'm going to add some of the Laurie seasoned salt, some of the garlic salt. No, this is the, I'm sorry, the Uncle Chris's. Add some garlic salt. You have to season to taste. Because after all, some of us like a lot of seasoning. Some don't like that much. You have the black pepper. And then my hands are clean. And then uh, a little bit of the accent. Kick it up a notch with the accent. You're going to rub all that goodness together. To get that meat seasoned real good. Okay, give me one second. I need to wash my hands because I'm going to season this half of the meat that I tossed up to the top. Okay, mm -hmm. guys, once you have tossed everything and you have the, the meat that was on the bottom, you have tossed that to the top, you're going to do the same thing. I got some of my Uncle Chris's seasoning here. I see. Some of the Lowry seasoning salt. Some of the garlic salt. And some accent. Now I'm going to rub all this together. Now some may say that this is a lot of season. Just take it down a notch if this is too much seasoning for you. But once you put it in the flour, and I even like to add a little season to my flour. Once you put it in the flour, once you add all the liquid and everything, it, it's going to come out good. Give me one second. Now I'm going to go ahead and put all of my meat into the bag with the flour mix. Hey so right here I have my bag here, my paper bag. Inside I have my flour, excuse me. I'm going to add some of the same seasoning in the flour mix. It's that's a little bit spicy. That smells so nasty. I don't know what it cooks. Autumn is just talking, y'all. I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay, so now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and add my... First, I'm going to shake all my little pieces together. Ah! Ooh, a mess. <laughs> okay, flour is... <laughs> okay, so now here you're going to add the meat into the flour. Sinking out. <laughs> I 
Add all your seasoned, good seasoned beef into the flour. The flour is all seasoned up. Y'all, I cannot wait to sink my mouth and teeth into this. Me too. It's, it's going to be so soup. good. It's going to be good, huh, Autumn? Yeah, I'm going to eat it up like a chicken. Okay, guys, I'm going to do the shake, shake, shake with this, and I'll come right back. Okay, guys, so I have added some vegetable oil to a skillet, and I'm going to just saute my veggies just a little bit here before I put my meat in. And you have to make sure your oil heats up. Then you add your veggies and everything. Give me one sec. This is how the meat should look. My meat is fully coated. And then I'm going to add my meat. To the veggies and I'll get right back okay, to you guys what I'm doing now I'm just kind of browning my meat a little bit you don't want to fully cook your meat uh, and I'm just I have my onions and bell peppers in here I'm just kind of browning it a little bit then I'm gonna put it in the pot and another tip is I have this uh, this is really a cutting board here but it's perfect when you can use this for a spoon rest because sometimes the spoon rests are so small but this works perfectly for me so I'm going to go ahead and brown all my meat up and everything and put it in the pot. Okay, and I'll get back with you guys. I love you. Already looks good, huh? <laughs> it smells outstanding. Okay, guys, I have browned my meat in the oil and in my um, onions and bell peppers. Now I'm going to take, uh, and, and I didn't cook the meat. It's a difference. I just kind of, you know, browned it on both sides. Now I'm going to take my beef stock and I'm going to add it to my Dutch oven. Add it to the beef. Okay, I bought two things of this stock. And it looks like we only need one. And I've opened both of mine, so I have to figure out what I can cook with the other one. <laughs> so, okay, you need one 32-ounce box of cooking stock, beef stock. And then, what I'm going to do now, stir my meat up real good with my veggies. Uh, I decided to leave the bell pepper and onion in there just for extra flavor. You can tell, see, when you add the uh, flour to your meat, see how it's already thickening up? That's what you want. And that's the whole purpose. And probably when I get to cooking this, and I'll come back and show you guys, once it starts cooking, I'll probably have to continuously add liquid so it doesn't burn at the bottom. Because this is going to get thick. You can tell, guys. Look, it's already thick. This is going to be so good with that cornbread. Mm, 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 mm. I like cornbread. Autumn cannot I like wait. Cornbread. I like cornbread. Uh-huh. That tastes good, real. Okay, guys. So you want to turn your flame high first then once it start boiling you want to turn it down and cover it okay give me one sec okay guys okay what i had to do was i had to after i added the uh beef broth and i did use both boxes uh i did have to add some water because i don't want this to be too thick uh once it starts cooking because it's going to have to simmer to get that meat real tender for probably about an hour and so once you bring it to see how i I even added probably about three cups of water. It's water. See how it's not so thick now? So what you want to do, once it starts boiling, you want to turn your pot down on low, well, medium heat, and um, cover it up. Continuously check it and stir it because you don't want this um, to stick to the pan because then it'll burn. But look at that, guys. It looks so good already. I just want to pour you it. see, it's still kind of thick, so I might even have to add a little bit more water. But I'll let you guys know. I'm going to go ahead and let this simmer and cover it up, and then I'll get back with you guys for the end result. Okay, guys, after it has simmered for probably about 30 to 45 minutes, now I have added my carrots and my potatoes. I've stirred those in. Doesn't it look good? Oh, with some cornbread, guys. So let that simmer. I'm going to check it in about 30 minutes to see how far we have to go. Okay. 
Uh, the reason why you don't add your carrots and potatoes in the beginning is because you don't want them to turn to mush. Okay? Okay. I'll get back with you guys in a minute. Okay, guys. I just want to give you an extra little tip. I didn't have time to babysit this pot and keep stirring it and stirring it. <coughs> so what I did was I set my oven on 400, put it in the oven. And look, guys. That way you don't have to worry about it sticking. The gravy is now is thick. That just is like so you want good. it for beef stew. So good. It, it, can't, it, can't, it looks good, Autumn. Yeah, because it kind of looks like a... And also, a if you want to... Have you ever noticed the... Be quiet, Autumn. Amazing. Have you ever noticed gravy when it has a real pretty rich brown color? Well, this is another tip. I added a little bit of this little baby here, this browning and seasoning sauce, and it made it that real pretty brown cover color. My beef is tender, my potatoes and carrots are tender, so now I'm going to take this out of the oven, and we're going to head on over to doing the cornbread. Okay, guys, now I'm getting ready to fix the cornbread, and I love Jiffy's. It's easy and it's good. So the uh, directions on the side is pretty uh, self-explanatory. For each package or box of Jiffy's, you need one egg. I'm going to do two boxes, so I have two eggs. You need one-third cup of milk. I have two-third cups of milk. And for a little extra, I add just a little bit of sugar. So you want to uh, put your contents in the bowl. And let me see if I'm supposed to beat the egg. I don't think so. No, it doesn't say to slightly beat that egg. I wanted to make sure. And then I have my two eggs. I'm going to dump those in there. I have my milk. Okay. And just for a little extra sweetness, and if you don't want it sweet, then don't do this part. But we like it sweet here. This is one, two tablespoons of sugar. I'm going to go ahead and mix this up, and I'm going to get it in the oven. You're going to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Okay, one moment. Okay, guys, everything has been um, stirred. It has been beaten. The uh, batter will be slightly lumpy. Uh, and the only thing you have to do is says in an ungreased pan, pour it in there. Let me go ahead and pour this in. I'm working with one hand. Hold on for one. Okay, guys, I have it poured in my pan. Shake that pan a little bit so it'll be evenly covered in the pan. Just like that. Have your oven on 400 and pop it in the oven until it's golden brown. I like to leave mine. It says here uh, 400 and uh, it says 15 to 20 minutes. So if it's not uh, golden brown in 20 minutes, I leave mine in there probably for an additional five minutes. Just you be the judge of it. Okay, One guys, moment. it's golden brown. I, it was in there probably about 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Give me one. Okay, second. guys. So now I'm going to add some butter to the top of this. If you are trying to watch your weight, I suggest you have this meal on your cheat day. Because this is going to... Oh, look at that. Oh, so good. Give me one second to get everything buttered down and plate Guys, it up. a couple of things. I just wanted to come on and let you know that I omitted from the recipe. I did not add the diced tomatoes. And I did not add these uh, beef stew packs. Why? Because it was so good without those. We didn't need those. And while it was in the oven, I added, I don't know if I told you guys, but I did add some of the garlic along with the browning sauce. Now to taste. Okay, so here's the finished product. I have my cornbread on the side. Mm. It's nice and thick. Oh, <laughs> have me a nice cold glass of mm. soda. So good, I'm gonna eat it. Oh, it looks good, Autumn. Okay, now for the taste test. Get me some meat on there, some good tender meat, potatoes. Blow it because it's piping hot. 
Mm, y'all, it's good. Mm, mm, mm. Do y'all like to put your cornbread on top and mix it in? Y'all, this is good. Mm. Well, guys, I'm about to dig in. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And y'all be blessed. It's just one thing that I forgot, and it was really important, and I forgot to bless the food and thank the Lord for our food. So Autumn is going to go ahead and bless the food for us tonight. Bless the food. For God, in the name of Jesus, I just bless this food and sanctify Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for praying over our food. You're welcome. Mm.